else matters My feet in the starboard sound so happy There's nothing like the sound Of Carolina Hoopie We're in Shelby, North Carolina today with Debbie and Harold Metcalf and Idaho. And Idaho has a very interesting story that I can't wait for you guys to hear. Debbie, tell us a little bit about Idaho and her journey. Idaho came to us uh, about 27 years ago, and she was stolen after we had her for nine years. Wow. And we didn't know anything about horse theft or people stealing horses. So like most people, we thought she just got out. Right. Even though we'd never had a horse out before. And in, in the course of a few hours, we discovered that our fence had been cut and the harsh truth of what really does still go on and didn't stop with the Old West days, horse theft. It's alive and well, and it's everywhere. Gosh, I cannot imagine that. You must have been terrified. What did you do? Well, the first things we did was cry. Mm -hmm, I'm sure. <laughs> cry and cry and cry. But then, you know, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you call law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And we thought that we were going to get a lot of help because you, you see it on TV. You call them and they solve the case. But that's usually not the case with horses. Right. And we, when law enforcement left here, we knew that if we were going to find her, we were going to have to be the ones that did it. Wow. What did you do? Well, the first thing we did, because the Cleveland County Fair was in town, which and it was an election year, all the candidates were over there. We printed up flyers and we went to the fair. Of course, we had horses there too. The kids were showing them at the fair. And we just blanketed the fair and we hit the candidate, we hit the sheriff, and we would not let up. Mm -hmm. You know, I can wrap myself around somebody's leg and they can't shake me off. Right. And when your horse is gone and you don't know where to turn, you are desperate. Yeah, I'm sure you would feel so desperate and helpless. We got a little more help because of that, probably. But if it hadn't have been election year, I think we would have been totally, you know, left out in the cold. Wow. How long did it take you to find her? Well, it took us 51 weeks. Wow. Our thief, because of the work that we did, though, our, our thief was caught in six months. Very good. And he was caught stealing more horses. Oh, no. In another state. And, you know, a stolen trailer that he was loading the horses on came back to Shelby, North Carolina. And we had been uh, kind of fixtures in the sheriff's office here. Mm -hmm. And with all every tip that we got, we'd walk in or we'd call it in and say, please put this in our file. And because we did this so much and said this man's name so much that when he got caught for this other crime, it went ding, ding, ding. So you kind of knew who had gotten her? We knew that there was pro that was the probably a 75% chance we had been told the whole truth by somebody in the horse industry. They always know what's going on. Sure. And this particular person had hoodooed <laughs> this man out of some money. Mm -hmm. So rather calling to help us, he called to get the other guy back. Right. Right. That's usually <laughs> the way it works. So you had to kind of measure that. Is it true or not true? But it made the most sense. And right. he pretty much laid out everything that happened. Gosh. That's wild. So you actually solved the case for the Sheriff's Department in a manner of speaking. We did solve it. And uh, then we, once it was solved, we used the information that they gathered at, to find her. Mm -hmm. And then where was she? She was in Etowah, Tennessee. Okay. And she had been there. She had been sold five times within six months. Wow. And... <laughs> okay. It's okay. She had been sold five times within six months. Mm. And she ended up with a 10-year-old girl. Right. Uh, who was riding her and showing her in the racking horse shows. And now we have a w world-class reserve champion <laughs> wow. that left here as a trail horse. Gosh, that's amazing. So, you know, the sad thing is we knew as soon as we heard that a 10-year-old girl was riding her that something had changed because we would have never put our children on this horse. Right. She was all spitfire and vinegar. Uh, she mm -hmm. was a man's horse. She was Harold's horse. He was the only one that ever rode her. Mm -hmm. And for good reason. Yeah. I mean, she's never kicked, bit, bugged. But when you get on her, the power is there. Right. And it's very intimidating. Right. If you're, it, you know, she looks pretty calm now. And you know, she is 28 now. And she's had her heyday, it's come and gone. But when you, <laughs> you, her, she says, no, it hasn't. 
<laughs> but when you put a saddle on her, uh huh, uh, she becomes a different horse. Right. And she is so full of pride and so full of herself. Mm -hmm. It's just so beautiful to watch. I'm sure. And, and for nine years, this is what I trailed behind on on trails. Right. And I would watch Harold. Right. And I would watch all the people watch him, and I'm going, hello, I'm here. <laughs> You're right. I'm here on this big right. red Tennessee walking horse. She's pretty, too. Yeah. But nobody looked at us. They always looked at her. All right. She had that pretty racking gait. That's such oh, a smooth, yeah. nice ride. Oh, yeah. And, and she just, when she went by, she said, look at me. Right. Right. With that tail arched. With that tail up, tucked, her head arched. Yeah. And we've had her in some clinics, and I've stood in the audience and, and listened to what people say, said about her. Mm-hmm. And nobody ever knew what she was, really. And she's been called an Arabian, an Andalusian, mm -hmm. I mean, all kinds of things. But one thing she does do, amongst all the other horses in the events, she always gets the attention. I'm sure. Well, she's beautiful. She's marked gorgeous, and she's built beautiful. Even at 28, she's outstandingly beautiful. When you got her back, what kind of shape was she in? Was she okay? When we got her back, she was a pink horse. Pink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When we got her back, she had been totally shaved. Okay. Uh, totally shaved off. And um, when in the sunshine, her she looked pink because mm -hmm. she had been shaved so close. Right, from her skin. From her skin. And you can still see it even now on the other side and on her spot back there. There's a little line mm -hmm. around it. She didn't leave here with that. Mm -hmm. But ever since she's gotten back where her spots, she came back without a spot. Mm -hmm. And she's never had the spot since. But... Um, you can, there's a line around it, no right. matter what time of year it is. She has a line around that spot on her neck and on her spot mm -hmm. on the side. Right. Well, getting Idaho stolen and getting her back led to a lot of other things, didn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a few minutes, and we'll talk about the second phase of this adventure. You know, you don't need a PhD in tractorology to understand that more power is a good thing. Mahindra tractors are engineered for maximum power and backed by a five-year powertrain warranty. Yes, sir. Mahindra tractors even have enough power to give the competition a lift. Take a good look at the world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra. This is Paul Dunn from Mule City Feeds. We've been delivering horse feed to Eastern North Carolina since 1981. And not only have we been delivering it, we've been leading the industry so far as compliance with state North Carolina and giving the best quality product possible. We test everything that comes in from the local farmers. We do quality assurance and we deliver the product. Give us a chance. Your neighbor's giving us a chance. We'd like to have your business here at Mule City Feeds. Also, when you deal with the big feed companies, you might have to wait four or five days just to get the feed. Give us a call and you'll be shocked. We'll deliver an hour. We're back now with Debbie Metcalf and we're going to talk a little bit about all the things that have happened since she got Idaho back and the business that's grown out of it. So you kind of formed a net posse with Stolen Horse International, didn't you? We did. Uh, actually, it formed us. Okay. When we were looking for Idaho, we had so many people come to help us on the Internet because we were the first ones that did that, that ever sent out an alert for a horse on the Internet. And this whole group of people started coming to help us and saying, if you help us, we'll help you because our horses have been stolen too. And we're going, wow. We thought we were the only ones in the world that have had this done. Right. And it just, from there, people started coming together and, and networking, and it stayed that way for 51 weeks. And then when Idaho was found, we thought we were done and we could go back and be normal, but it never happened. So you've kind of become like the guy on America's Most Wanted for the equine industry, which is a great thing. Yes, pretty much. Uh, I've been introduced at, as... John Walsh of the horse industry a lot Definitely. and I used to kind of put my head down and go oh I'm so embarrassed <laughs> but not anymore because over the years I mean I've been doing this for 16 years now right you I mean because there's no resource there's no place to go for help no there's not there's there's been some people that try but they you know you you got to live this job mm -hmm. and we do my husband and I my, my my kids have to have lived 
helping other people for 16 years unofficially, you know, since 2003 officially, when I finally said, oh, what the heck. Right. I'm not going to escape this, so, you know, I quit my day job mm -hmm. and uh, started Stolen Horse International as a nonprofit. And it has just grown by leaps and bounds um, since then. I'm sure your website is incredible with all the information and stuff that's out there on that. It has. It keeps growing every year. Well, I know that you were telling me with Idaho that you've done a lot of things to protect her from ever being stolen again and not 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 necessarily protect her from being stolen because that's really hard to keep from happening, but if she was making her more identifiable. What are some of those things that you've done? Well, one thing that we learned right away when Idaho was gone, every time we went to a horse auction, somebody so asked us what kind of ID did she have and our response was ID. <laughs> Horses don't have ID. Yeah. Because none of this would have happened if I'd just known one thing. Right. And that one thing I try to teach people still about. But with her, ID became very important. The first thing we did was brand her. And we did it ourselves. And we messed it. We did six horses. We, our horses have freeze brands. Right. And then we thought, okay, we've got it solved. But guess what? As we go fur further along, we find out that Freeze brands are hard to trace back to the owner right. if they're out of state. Right. So then we thought, okay, what can we do next? Microchips. Just like you'd microchip your dog. Just like you'd microchip your dog. So we got us some microchips, and we microchipped our own horses. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, well, we did it. Why can't other people? And at that time, the only way you could get a microchip was through a vet. Right. And so we researched the laws and found out that a person can microchip their own horse. Mm -hmm. And so we went to one of the microchip companies with the plan of starting uh, a microchip your own horse program. And that's where it got started. So today, if you, are, if you are going to microchip a horse and you can find it online where you can purchase it, right? it's because of us. That's awesome. That's really cool. So folks, you can buy microchips and do it yourself, and it's very, very simple, and you can probably get the information on where to get them on Debbie's website. Actually, we do have them on our website. We have different companies, different packages, because what we're trying to do is we're not just trying to sell you a microchip. Right. We're trying to put give you an education about the microchip and the scanners at the same time. We're not governed by any particular company that's just doing sales pitches on us. Mm -hmm. We do our own research. Now, do you have a registry set up for the microchips? We do. Because that's something like KC does for dogs, mm -hmm. so, but that would be great for the horse industry. So that's We neat. have a net posse identification program. Okay. And if you get a microchip through us, and these are fundraisers for mm -hmm. us, uh, if you get a microchip for us, you're automatically included in that registry for that chip. Right. And our registry, you can register not just the microchip, but your freeze brand, pictures of your horse. You know, it's your own little data place right there on the website. And, of course, if the horse ever goes missing, no matter how it's missing, it goes right over to the other side. And you save the listing fee. Mm -hmm. we, we don't charge you a listing fee if your horse is in the NIP registry. And then we can go straight out with the alerts. Well, that's a great place, too, to, for a horse owner to be able to store that information so that they can access it very quickly and easily when the time comes and they don't have to search through 900 old hard drives on their computer to find it. You know, through our organization, we've done the research already. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, done, we've worked with law enforcement. To, we've worked with marketing people to come up with that flyer that you see mm -hmm. so that when that flyer is hanging in a public place, it draws your attention to it. Right. Where you might walk by another one sitting right beside it. Right. Plus, we have the right information on it so that if your horse from North Carolina ends up in California, that it can be traced back to you in North Carolina. That's really, really neat. And also, if it's found, how to get it back is on your website, too, which would be another complicated process in itself. Because oh. if they bought that horse, they feel like they own it. So then it's a, a whole different battle. And it's a different battle by state, too. Mm -hmm. uh, each state has their own laws. Sometimes it goes county by county. Sometimes it just really depends on who's involved in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it's who's involved who has the horse. Right. I mean, we've seen it all. I'm sure. Well, how many horses do you feel like you guys have helped people recover now? Uh, if you count the ones that we've prevented, thousands. Yeah, I'm sure, without a thousands. doubt. Thousands. And, and what case comes to mind is the most difficult one that you remember offhand? You know, I try, I try not to think about that too much because 
I, I, it gets kind of emotional. Oh, here I go. It gets kind of emotional for me. But I think sometimes the, some of the victims that we work closer with and mm -hmm. I get to know better, um, I become more vested in that, especially when those victims are given back to help more people. Right. Because a lot of our victims will list their horses and some even say, let me know when you find it. Mm -hmm. uh, and some will come back and um, go, well, I'm looking for my horse. How can I help look for other people's horses too? Right. And so those people, those stand out. And I guess the one that stands out the most is Mojito. Mojito's mm -hmm. carbon copy. The horse is from Missouri. I know he's out there. He's a black and white spotted Paso. Mm -hmm. We've had tips on him, and we get close, but we can't get him. Right. And I've worked with the owner, uh, and she's been in the booth with me. She's come from all, all the way from Missouri to Tennessee to North Carolina uh, to other states to help me. Mm -hmm. She pays it forward to other victims. Right. So that one and probably the two polo ponies mm -hmm. from, that were stolen with their truck, their trailer, and $60,000 worth of tack. Wow. Uh, the truck was later found in Texas. And we thought we would be able to go back with the leads on that. Mm -hmm. But the police in Texas were great. The police in Florida were not so great. Okay. And so we lost the lead. So those are, you know, an older case and a newer case. But because I'm so close to the victims, mm -hmm. I'm more vested in that. I can tell you guys about a personal experience that I had with Debbie that she probably doesn't even know I, I was involved in. I live in Little Middlesex, North Carolina, which is a thriving metropolis of about 800 people, maybe on a good day. And a lady in the neighborhood had a very pregnant horse that she woke up one morning and it was gone completely gone. The fence wasn't down. There were no tracks. There was no evidence of the horse walking away out in the country in a neighborhood where she knew everybody and had lived there all of her life. And um, we, we got in touch with Debbie and she suggested the things that we do, which was really put a lot of heat in the very local community. Flyers, Craigslist, the law enforcement, all the horse owners in the area that we knew, we took flyers to their barns. And the girl kind of thought she knew who took it because that person had tried to buy it and she didn't want to sell her. So because we turned up the heat, that horse turned up three days later at a construction site tied to a fence post. <laughs> so if it hadn't been for you though, with that great advice, that horse would have never been found. Looking for the perfect bed and bale? From the moment you drive through the gate, relax and enjoy all Hawks Crest Manor has to offer. Whether you're coming for a wedding, a family reunion, a trail ride, a weekend away with the girls, or from a busy, bustling meeting in the city, make our house your home. Located in Spring Hope, North Carolina, Minutes from downtown Raleigh, Rocky Mount, or Wilson. Schedule your reservation today. We're your neighborhood source for everything you need from your farm to your home. At Harper Sales and Service, a division of Harper Landscaping, we can cater to all your mowing needs. Whether you need to start out with a beginner series for those smaller lawns, you can work your way all the way up to a zero turn and even get into those bigger areas where you might have an acre or two or more. My animals depend on me and I depend on Harper Equipment Sales and Services to keep me running. From my weed eater to my tractor, they can fix it all. When you look for Harper Landscaping, it's no sweat. If you act fast, and that's what we're trying to get people mm -hmm. to do. You know, some of the social media is great. Right. And we do use that as tools for what we do. But that's just a small part of what we do. Absolutely. And, and we're trying to get people to know that. They look at our Facebook pages, and they say, and we don't have hundreds of thousands of connections there. But 16 years doing what I do, mm -hmm. that's the, the value to coming to us because I have connections with all kinds of people and organizations that I call on as needed. Right. You know, if this horse is a particular breed or has a particular discipline, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got one right now that y'all have not even seen that we're working with behind the scenes. Right. We do that too. Right. And we've had people take horses back just because I pick up the phone and say, hello, this is Debbie Metcalf from Stolen Horse International, and we've had a report mm -hmm. filed. And I would like to talk to you about that. Right. 
And lots of times people do not want, we don't put names out there. Right. You know that. We always stay within the law. But sometimes we can turn the heat up so quick. Yeah. That people know who they are. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes the time, and it's just like if your child gets taken, that first 24 hours is very critical. And if that should ever happen to you, and I certainly hope it never does, do contact Stolen Horse International and find out what to do. What are some tips you can give our viewers to keep their horses from being stolen? Well, the first thing they need to do is ID. Right. Yeah, and this isn't just from theft. You know, we work with stolen horses, missing horses, lost, found, mm -hmm. horses lost in disasters. So the first thing that we can tell everybody is some type of ID. Right. Uh, you pick it. Uh, what works for you? You know, I have my favorites, but I like to see a combo. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've seen our horses have yes. it. We have, we have something that travels with our horse that you can't see. Mm -hmm. And then we have ID on our horses that you can see. Right. They play on each other. Right. There is no one type of ID that's perfect. The second thing is, once you get your ID, just like you, if you have an alarm in your house, what do you have down by the driveway? Mm -hmm. You have a big sign that says, we have an alarm. Right. And it's a hook, hooked up to something that's going to get you <laughs> right. if you break in my house. So get a sign. You can make it. We have them on netposse.com, but put it up. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, you know, just be wary of anybody. Mm -hmm. Another good thing in the horse community is to talk to your friends and other horse owners, too, because a lot of times these folks travel in groups and they hit neighborhoods and areas, you know, and then they're long gone. So it's always good to be aware of what's going on in the community as well. Well, you know, in our case, the person who actually took our horse lives 50 miles away. Right. And our horse was baited every day with feed, so I don't think he drove over here every day. Right. Uh, and put the feed in the pasture to get her to stand where he wanted her to stand. Mm -hmm. So we had somebody local to help out with that. Right. And we think we know who that is, but we can't say. Sure, sure. Well, I think probably in most of the cases, it's probably somebody that you've come in contact with and that you, you've had some dealing with and you don't realize it. Well, in our case, we had dealings with and we realized it. We just didn't, <laughs> we just didn't realize what, you know, connections could right. be. Right. And if a person goes out and their horse is gone, then what are the first things that they should do? If their horses are gone, the first thing you do is call law enforcement. Okay. And you file a report. And a lot of times in these cases, you can't tell if, you know, if a horse just got out or if somebody took it. And the people that take horses are good at making it look that, that way. Mm -hmm. Or they're good at making it look like a fence was broken and they just got out. Right. And then when the law, law enforce, enforcement officers come out there, they think the horse just got out. Right. And that's their first assumption. That's their first assumption. Mm -hmm. Unless you've got a cut fence, a cut uh, lock on a gate, something that really clearly tells you mm -hmm. that something's been tampered with, lots of times you don't even know right. what happened to your horse. So I still say report it as stolen. Hey, if it's not stolen, that's even better. Mm -hmm. But if we have a police criminal case number, then we can go out with a criminal case stolen horse report, you know, with an alert for that. Otherwise, we treat it as a, a missing lost. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we work with civil suits as well. Right. If we can find a case that if the horse gets back, it will help, right. you know, get, get them in court and help them. And you worked on a case, too, in the North Carolina mountains where the horse threw the lady off or, or somehow or another they got disconnected and the horse just took off and was gone for a while. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't stolen, but it was gone. And you helped with uh, that. that. Are you talking about? Um, the walking horse with the lady that was? With Marilyn's horse? Yes, Marilyn's, Marilyn's horse. horse. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I actually went out with her to an auction because we got on that one really quick. Mm -hmm. And we had a tip come in that a horse just like it went through an auction. Right. So I met her at an auction, and I taught her the ropes at the auction and told her, told, taught her how to get hooked up with people. And a horse did go through there. It did? That matched her horse. Oh, okay. Turned out not to be her horse. Right. But it certainly was plausible that it could be. Right. And the connections that we pulled together for that were pretty amazing. But the horse was found nine days later. Yeah. And for some reason, nine days, nine to ten days when a horse is lost, mm -hmm. seems to be the magic number for us. Right. Yeah, it's a, and I keep telling people when your horse runs away, keep going back to the same area that mm -hmm. they're lost because lots of times that's where they'll be, and that's where her horse ended up. Right, right. That, thank goodness that was another happy ending. 
just, you do such good work for so many people, and just even the peace of mind that you offer people is is really re, must be rewarding for you. Well, sometimes it's just somebody <clears throat> to talk to, mm-hmm. and since a lot of our volunteers are victims themselves, um, I can't spend the time with all of them that I used to mm-hmm. because I'm I never quit. I mean, right. I can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and not get caught up. Right. So now I'm able to pair them up with somebody else that's been through a similar situation, so they got a buddy. That's not. That's wonderful. Now, how can people contact you? What's your web address? www.netposse.com. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today and, and talking to us about what to do if this awful thing happens. And I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about what to do if your horse gets stolen and how you can help other people whose horses have been stolen and maybe just keep a watchful eye out there in the community and do your part as a responsible horse owner. My name is Scott Brookins and I am the owner of Brookins Construction and MD Barn Master of the Carolinas. At MD Barn Master, we have the best warranty in the business. We have a variety of designs to choose from. Our barns are easily customizable to meet and fit, uh, meet your needs. Uh, We have financing available to those who qualify. Our barns are fire resistant and they hold their value with little maintenance. Let us build your dream barn for you today. People from around the Triangle come to Carolina Barbecue of Garner off Highway 70 because they know what they'll get. Authentic Eastern North Carolina chopped barbecue, southern fried chicken, hush puppies, Brunswick stew, and more. But did you know that they'll come to you? For your next backyard party, company event, graduation party, weddings, rehearsals, or any other occasion, you bring the people, and Carolina Barbecue of Garner will bring the pig. Call 773-0222. Hi, I'm Sue Gray with the North Carolina Horse Council. The North Carolina Horse Council in the past couple years has recently gotten a new, brand new license plate. Come to our website, www.nchorsecouncil.com. Click on that beautiful plate, takes you right to the Department of Motor Vehicles, and you can order that plate and have it on your vehicle tomorrow. So why don't you stand beside me, come and join the herd, and be a member of the North Carolina Horse Council, and take advantage of the many benefits that it has to offer you and your horse, and let's ride the trail together. Carolina Hoofbeats is brought to you in part by Newcomb Quarter Horses. Newcomb Quarter Horses, with over 40 years experience. Find out how we can help you today. NewcombQuarterHorses.net And also by Carolina Hoofbeats Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in North Carolina. Catch up on the latest issue at CarolinaHoofbeats.com And also by Southeast Equine Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in the southern United States. Sitting high in the saddle, nothing else matters. My feet in the stirrups, I'm so 